Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, thank you uh, for all the presenters um, and also the you know the the pa pa uh, all the participants and the, especially the panelists. So uh, now now I would like to uh, you know open this up uh, for Q and A session. Um, but however, as I suggested, uh, I would like you know to give the first opportunity to our panelists uh, um, to ask at least one question from each uh, you know presenter, and then we can open up the uh, you know Q and A session for for all the other participants. And so so um, so we, we are getting questions through the chat, so we can uh, select a question and and and. You know, post that later. So now, um, yeah, I would uh, you know kindly um, ask the, our uh, two panelists, uh, um, you know, Dr. Janaka Vijayakulasuri and Professor Harshan Ramukhal, uh, um, to you know um, uh, um, initiate the question and answer session. Shall I start, Sudesh? Yes. Yeah. Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, some. Uh, I'll start with a few overall comments about the panel. I think uh, it was very it was very interesting because there was a very uh, big variety of contexts also represented. So we had people from national colleges of education, school teachers, people from uh, international schools, uh, and also the subjects they addressed. Uh, were also, there was a nice diversity. Uh, there were quite a few on online learning, which is to be expected because that is a big topic right now in education. Uh, then some others looked at uh, you know, vocational education and even things like how our physical needs, like uh, how at what times we eat, etc., impacts on learning. So there was a very good variety. Uh, now, one overall comment I had to make is that uh, some concepts were inadequately defined. So, for instance, what do we mean by online learning? For instance, is online learning uh, having a Zoom discussion or a or a video tape uh, lesson? Is that online learning, or is online learn, learning something else? Because I think we need to make a distinction about that, uh, given the current context and how popular this whole idea of online learning has become. I would like to suggest that what we are right now doing in Sri Lanka particularly is what we call emergency remote teaching. That is, we are in an emergency situation where schools have been shut down due to a pandemic and we are not able to meet our uh, students physically. Therefore, we are using all kinds of technologies in order to deliver content. So, but that is not a properly structured online learning because there are pedagogical considerations which are, have not been taken into uh, uh, effect. Now, since you are also behind schedule, I'll reserve my comments. Uh, so how do we ask the questions from each panelist? Uh, do I ask and then uh, does uh, Janaka ask or do I ask my questions from everybody? Uh, what is the procedure we follow? Um, actually, like, um, yeah, since the, the time, um, has also, uh, you know, have, we have some restrictions. Maybe uh, so. Um, so we will ask Dr. Janaka also uh, to give like an overall comment. Uh, right. Okay. And and then then I think uh, 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 now I see like because of the time, maybe rather than uh, you know uh, asking question from each uh, you know uh, you know pa you know the presenter. I mean, we can we can maybe ask like general questions, but. But if we have uh, particular questions, I think uh, um, I mean I, I would I would like to suggest like uh, we ask from each uh, member. Um, uh, what do you, what do you think, uh, uh, Professor Jan uh, Dr. Janaka and Professor Arjuna? I think uh, I have overall comment, and then uh, uh, if there are any specific questions, we can ask. But I think uh, then we have to make sure that from the evaluation criteria, if everybody is not given a chance. We have to remove that part from uh, the evaluation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So shall I start? Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, first of all, I should say I am really impressed by all of your presentation because uh, we were informed that this is a presentation done by some beginners, but I think some of the presentations were 
out of that country. I mean, they were suitable for any conference in the world. So I'm really happy about that. And all of you think this is the beginning of a wonderful uh, academic life ahead of you. There are a few things that you can improve overall. Um, and also you can get ideas from others presentation. One main thing I found that is lacking in presentations, some of the presentations, were uh, you are not having proper data analytical method or research methods. Right? There was one presentation I can point out that if you want, uh, which is an example of a proper research presentation uh, of a quantitative and qualitative type. And also, there was very good uh, action research or one or two research like that, uh, where you can get a lot of ideas. So one of my main uh, advice to you all is there are a lot of analytical tools and also analytical methods and also data visualization techniques. Right? So rather than just uh, showing the data you collected, but don't get discouraged because that is the first step. You collect data and coming here and presenting it is the first step. Then there are a lot of new ways of visualizing data and where you can see more information about the data you collect. So try to explore them. And if you apply them in some of, oh, I think almost all the researchers, I think you can do a wonderful thing. So that is my overall comment and best wishes for everyone. Um, yeah, so I think um, so I think uh, to be fair for everybody, I think uh, let's go, uh, uh, you know, presentation one by one. And so our panelists and, you know, I, I have also noted down the questions for like each um, presenter. So um, so we can go by uh, one by one present like presentations and, um, you know, uh, mainly like uh, we can ask one question from, uh, you know, if we feel like, you know, uh, you can you can say like uh, we can we can go ahead and ask the question and then uh, make sure, you know, making sure that uh, every presenter, you know, get a question and, and time for answer and then we can uh, we can come back uh, to other questions later. Okay. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. OK, so um, so the first presentation, the study on effectiveness in online teaching and teachers perspective by uh, group A. So do we have uh, can can um, we get a, one specific question for that? Um, so do we have a group in this, uh, you know, um, online? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm there. Sir. Hi. hi. Yeah, hi. Sir. Uh, nice to nice to see you. Um, okay. Uh, shall I ask then? So yeah, then, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Miss Kurupu, thank you very much for that very interesting presentation. I think it's a very useful. Uh, we get a, we got a useful sense of what's happening in the system with the challenges posed by online education. Now, my question was: you had uh, focused a lot on the nine. Sort of the, the what I would call the infrastructure difficulties for, for teachers, like the, you know, the internet access, device, knowledge about the software. But what about now the broader question I asked, like do we need by online do we just you know deliver a lecture for 30 or 40 hours? Or is online teaching something that that is beyond. So, what 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 is your definition of online teaching? That's my question. Sir, could you please uh, repeat that, sir? Uh, it was not clear the question that. Yeah, there's a echo coming. I think from somebody. I when I stop, I can hear my voice. Yes. Okay, I'll I'll try to speak a little slower. My question is. What is your definition of online teaching? Sir, so actually, when we consider online teaching, uh, so when you focus on past uh, I mean history, it was not actually focusing on uh, this uh, new tech, using new technology. So I think online teaching may occur not only by using this uh, new technology that is uh, Zoom, Team, and uh, the other platforms, 
we can use other uh, methods such as sending uh, sending the documents to the students and as well as we can do the uh, do these things do sort of uh, activities while being in the classroom as well actually i was focusing with the online teaching i was focusing on this uh, blended teaching as well sir because uh, i i thought of having this uh, blended practicing this blended teaching in order to uh, overcome the difficulties what we face uh, at any circumstances so therefore i think not only this uh, using use of this uh, uh, zoom team and all the other platforms rather than that uh, even we can use other uh, methods as well sir okay thank you um uh, thank you. Um, so shall, uh, shall we go to, I mean, uh, if you have more questions, we can, if, if the time permits, we can ask later. So shall we go to the second presenter? Uh, is, so um, maybe Janaka also has a question? No, uh, if I have a question, I will ask at the letter session. What I will do is I will ask from this one. So we will uh, interchange the people and ask questions and then finally ah, okay. if there are yeah. questions, we can yeah. ask. Okay, yeah. That, yeah, that's a better arrangement. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I mean, actually, I, I would like, I mean, if I have also questions, so I mean, I can also, you know, contribute to that as well. Um, yeah, so the our second presenter, um, uh, uh, Paul Gampala, is um, Dr. Paul Gampala, right? So, yes, so, I'm here. I'm are you here? here. Yes. Okay, okay, hi, uh, I think you are Sujeevan, you know, Sujeevan, you know? yes. Uh, Sujeevan, okay. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation, it was very interesting. And also one thing I really appreciated in your presentation is you always try to relate your work into some real life examples, right? So that is commendable. So my question is, now at your conclusion, you were telling something like 60% of teachers are negative about online teaching and 36 are positive. But actually speaking, now, for example, if you take me, even inside me, there are positive, things and negative things about online teaching. So yes. what are the methods that you propose to grasp this both uh, things? For example, if you take a particular person, he or she will have both attributes, right? negativeness and positiveness towards online teaching. So can we get something like black and white like this? 60% of teachers are negative and 36% of teachers are positive. I just want your opinion. That's all. Right? Yeah, actually, you know, even we can, we could not marginalize. Like you know, when uh, when when preparing the rubrics, what percentage? Like even like it was a bit complicated when we were preparing the Likert scale. What are the uh, rubrics? What kind of uh, standards that we consider? Uh, you know, there were sometimes uh, we, we mainly use this content analysis. So once we find uh, same kind of idea, uh, whether we are going to put this into this or that, whether they strongly agree, agree. Again, like, you know, even we have certain doubts, then what we did was we personally, you know, as I told you that uh, we collected data through uh, social media. I mean, the Facebook um, uh, survey so what we did was we went to their profiles then we personally messaged them again uh, we could send messages found their information we could uh, talk to them personally to get exactly their views that's how we uh, put them into the Likert scale okay thank you uh, okay thank you for both of you um, uh, so, um, uh, I hope uh, our two panelists wouldn't mind if I ask the next question uh, from our third presenter. Uh, if uh, is uh, the third presenter, uh, Miss Veera Kodi, is uh, are you are you present? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So the title was uh, motivating lecturers of co-curricular activities for video conferencing. So actually, the reason I, I would wanted to ask this question because you know uh, I'm also you know teaching like uh, fine art subjects, dance, uh, you know especially dance. So so you talk about like 
uh, you know, how, uh, how to, uh, you are trying, uh, you know, uh, to engage the, the lecturers who are teaching uh, the fine arts subject and sports to, um, you know, engage in, in, in uh, Zoom. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 I um, you know, I appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the effort you do, did um, through your action research. Um, however, the question I, I, I would like to ask is like you highlighted the fact that a uh, fact of the cost benefit of it. So, yeah. um, so uh, uh, the way I understood is like um, because of, because the uh, the Zoom technology is introduced, so the the College of Education can be you know a benefit from that like a cost benefit because you know then you don't have to pay the 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 face to face. Um, you know, sessions and and the dance and music teachers, right? So um, so I personally feel there's a kind of uh, 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 a danger for live art, performing arts, uh, looking uh, the technology as you know the the cost benefit aspect. So, um, but that that's my personal view. So, would you like to comment on that, or would you like to elaborate, like? Um, the cost benefit aspect what that you 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 mentioned in your research okay in our college there are six lecturers for those activities but that is not enough for that uh, because of that we have allocated visiting lecturers as well so visiting for visiting lecturers we have to pay nearly three lakhs per month but if if we use zoom or any kind of online education technology then we don't want that much of that much of lecturers number of lecturers so six lecturers that's more than enough for our college is that clear yes, uh, yeah um yeah i mean um uh, so we can save that money that's what i want to highlight without right, right. using visiting lecturers we can do it with our own lecturers yeah so i mean the only concern is like uh, you know uh, uh, as a as an uh, a temporary solution for the pandemic situation, uh, I, I think it, it it's it's a good solution. But uh, but I think like uh, there is a danger when when you try to replace the uh, uh, physical interaction with like especially like performing arts with uh, totally Zoom technology, right? So would you agree with me in that regard? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, thank you. So uh, let's move to the, the fourth presenter. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, actually, uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, we have to skip the fourth one because uh, the fourth presenter could not present. Um, uh, yeah, sorry about that. So the fifth presenter, the, um, uh, the, the title was uh, Improve the Student's Positive Attitude for Learning um, of vocational training course in bakery. Uh, Ms. Veera Kona, are you, are you uh, online? Are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here. Ah, okay, sure. Um, yeah, so anyone from our fan panel want to ask a question? Yes, from uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, no, basically, I was saying that uh, I think your study is very, very important because uh, vocational education is an area that is under prioritized in Sri Lanka. So congratulations and it's a, I think it's a very interesting research and for trying to create motivation in students. Now, what I wanted to though ask you is whether you thought about uh, not just the bakery issue, but vocational education in general and why these social perceptions still persist in Sri Lanka? Why are vocations still, uh, you know, undervalued? Why, why, why does everybody want to become a doctor, engineer, etc.? That kind of mindset. Uh, did, is that something you considered when you were doing the research? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a very, very important subject and very important topic uh, which we should have as a uh, education ministry and they should have pay more attention about this vocational education. Uh, the, the people just they set mind on all levels and A levels. But as as we all know about what happened uh, in all levels, there is more than 80,000 students leaving schools without completing their A levels or any kind of specific uh, 
this kind of vocational training uh, they are they don't mainly they don't directly directly go for the vocational training courses uh, and parent also do, do not have a clear idea what is the vocational training path uh, i think most of the society our society uh, yet they are thinking about the paper qualifications not about the vocational and uh, training technicians uh, i think this is uh, very important and we have to pay more attention about the vocational education okay all right thank you thank you uh, okay thank you for both of you um, so uh, the so the next presenter was um, um, yeah uh, miss disana uh, introducing student satisfaction through active engagement in project based learning um uh, dr uh, uh, janaka vijaykrishna would you like to ask a question from uh, first of all miss disana are, are you here yes sir, i am here ah, okay. Uh, Dr. Janaka, would you like to ask a question? Um, yeah. So uh, since uh, maybe Dr. Vijayakulasuri is um, you know um, not answering, so actually I would like to ask you a question, uh, Mr. Zanaika. So yeah, again, like you, your study also. Uh, I, I found it very interesting, um, you know, like uh, you know, trying to find like uh, alternative ways to engage students um, through project based learning. So I, I thought like what you did was like, um, you know, uh, interesting in two ways. One is like uh, you are trying to, um, you know, deviate from like traditional uh, evaluation methods and teaching module methods. And on the other hand, you are concerned, you're, you're like, uh, you know, driving students to be more uh, you know concerned about the 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 environment and 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 through like a plant like planting and and to engage with it um have a, like a long term engage with the uh, with the plant and and the subject that they are studying so i thought that was uh, very uh, you know interesting and uh, in, 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 you know it's a um, uh, very very useful approach to uh, education so the the question I would like to ask is like the when you analyze when you analyze um, your your uh, uh, your presentation was mostly on on the, uh, the quantitative uh, um, aspects of the finding. So I, I was wondering like what was the qualitative aspect uh, uh, of the finding? For example, like how uh, you know how the students um, engage with this plant? You know that they were growing. And they're engaging and, and qualitatively affect the their understanding of the plan. So, would you like to comment on that? Uh, sir, I used the article uh, to uh, uh, eval uh, evaluate their um, qualitatively my data. Um, uh, I uh, uh, asked them to include uh, methodologies they used to plant the plant uh, and uh, how they maintain the plant and if the plant died what are the reasons and uh, what happened to their uh, desire on planting activities uh, like that i use the article for uh, qualitative analysis oh, okay yeah so actually i was thinking like uh, whether you had uh, the students had like emotional attachment to the plants and things like that um yeah however yeah thank you thank you for your response so let's move to the the next presenter uh, uh, the uh, the title was um, investigation on t um, challenging the uh, the interval time uh, and its impact uh, on student hunger and concentration level in classroom activities so miss marsing are you here um, yes sir i'm here okay great 
Uh, Sudesh, shall I ask the question? Yes, yeah, Professor Hashim, yes, please. Okay, uh, Ms. Mara Singh, I think that's an excellent research, and I think Professor Vajiravira Singh from the medical faculty has also commented on the chat, and uh, he has asked a different question, but I, I want to ask a slightly separate question from you. Uh, now, Dara, uh, did you consider any of the other variables that might have impacted the students' uh, behavior? Uh, a, uh, not just the timing of the food, but the type of the food that they ate, uh, maybe the time they got up in the morning, so distance from school, uh, because these could also have an impact. Uh, that is not to take away from the importance of your study. I think that was very innovative and I, I, I think it's a very good study, but just, just a couple of questions about these other variables. Uh, yes, sir. Now, uh, with regards to the type of food that they uh, consume, uh, actually from the uh, analysis that I did, that is the qualitative analysis from the questionnaire, uh, I did not focus on that factor. Uh, and also, as you mentioned about the distance from the school, but uh, I did uh, uh, inquire from them about the academic performance so that uh, I ensured within the classroom that the students basically have equal academic proficiency so that uh, that variable can be made a constant uh, when it came into the analysis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you for both of you. Um, so we'll come to uh, the, the Professor Ajay's question uh, after we hear, um, you know, ask the other questions. Um, so the next presenter was, um, the title was, uh, yeah, the impact of uh, parental control on student academic performance, the case study um, of secondary uh, schools in Waunia North Zone. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lalita uh, Mage, uh, are you here? Are you connecting with us? Is Lalita Atma again? Okay. Um, yeah. So there's so yeah. we should move on. Should yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so we'll move on to the next one. Uh, so the last presentation was uh, on the impact of school administration strategies on academic achievement of uh, low performing secondary level students in southern province. Uh, Ms. Prabhani, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Ah, okay. I'm here. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Jarko. Shall I ask? Yeah, yeah okay. sure. Go, go ahead, Ashwin. Yeah. Prabhani, again, thank you very much. I think. Uh, this is also a very critical problem that you have addressed in the school system and our education system as a whole, where we kind of ignore the low proficiency uh, students because we are so exam centric and focused on achievement at the uh, uh, So now my question was, so now you talked about a lot of issues that uh, come up in terms of low proficiency students and how their, their problems are not that good. And you had interviewed uh, principals. Now, principals ask school administrators, so they, in a way, contribute to the problem also. So I just wanted to ask about that. What, what was their response? Like, was it that the system was constraining them, or was it failures in the administration? But what was exactly the problem? Yes, uh, sometimes uh, the re reason may be, uh, there may be several reasons. Uh, so one, one of the reasons may be this. Uh, existing uh, in the current uh, school system that means exam oriented so most of the principals teachers and all, all the administrators uh, focus on so the one of the uh, major uh, issue may be one of that and at the same time uh, what i notice but sometimes the uh, principals are not uh, having uh, i mean uh, very good academic planning. Uh, th that may be another reason because uh, they are actually uh, like uh, they have very short plans uh, because uh, they do not plan uh, uh, because if they if they plan such kind of things when the students are in grade six, seven, eight, or nine, so the sometimes we can uh, make them. Uh, I, I mean, we can take them to the uh, expected standards. Uh, rather than uh, making them uh, low-performing students in the system. 
uh, what I noticed was most of the principals are paying attention to these kind of students at the latter part of the I mean, maybe in grade 10 or 11, and they are focusing those students, are low performing students in the uh, initial stages. Maybe uh, in uh, considering secondary level students, maybe in grade 6 or 7, they are not much uh, thinking about those students and taking uh, uh, precautions for those who are in grade 10 and 11. So that also may be one of the problems. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, so there's a special, uh, we have a special request for all the presenters not to leave. Uh, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, end this session in like uh, about 10 uh, minutes, maximum 15 minutes. So we ask you to stay with us because uh, at the end of this session, uh, there, there are uh, uh, three awards uh, for the, the uh, the best presenters for this session. So we ask you to stay. Uh, and so um, so we can get, uh, we have, although we have some more questions from the chat, so we are, we are going to get uh, one question from the chat. Uh, so Professor Sanjeev is going to, uh, you know, ask that question. question. Okay, uh, there's a question for the presenter E7, that is uh, Ms. Dipuni Marasinghe. The question is from Professor Vajiravira Singh. What was the rationale for selecting the inter, uh, intervention interval, especially students who did sports in the morning? Were they able to have better results? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. yes, sir. Yes, yeah. uh, sir. With regards to the research, sir, my rationale was actually uh, I am a teacher for grades 10 and 11, and in my class, I found so many students who were doing sports. They usually come late to class because they say that they were having their breakfast. And uh, after having this intervention, I found that they actually attended class on time. So they used to come in the morning to class and then they were waiting for the interval to really come in for this period of one month when we introduced. Uh, and uh, there was an improvement from them. Uh, however, I would say that since this research was done, was actually introduced for a period of one month. Uh, the students were highly motivated and they requested to like continue it for so many uh, for some time. Uh, but we could not really carry it forward because uh, since it was research based and we had to change the entire uh, timetable to accommodate this shift uh, in the whole school. So that's why we uh, just continued it for one month and finished it. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Marsinger. So uh, with that, we, are, we, we have come to the end of uh, the question and answering session. So um, as the chair of this uh, session, I, I would like to, you know, um, uh, brief, uh, briefly comment about the, the, the today's session. So actually, um, you know, I, I was really uh, um, honestly impressed about the presentations uh, the, uh, today because um, actually I didn't ex expect like uh, this presentation to be this good. Um, so, uh, so congratulations for uh, the, the presenters and, and uh, as uh, Professor uh, Rambukwell, uh, Harshan Rambukwell, uh, uh, you know, very correctly said, so the, the, the diversity of this presentation, like, uh, and, and in, this was diverse in many different levels. So, so therefore, I, I was really happy to see that. So um, congratulations for the, all the presenters. Um, so now, um, uh, so so the, uh, the organizers have a 10 minute uh, video uh, for you, uh, you know, prepared for you. So um, so after that 10 minute video, so we will be presenting the, the awards uh, for the, uh, the best uh, research in this session. So yeah, so I, again, I ask uh, the, uh, the, all the presenters to uh, uh, also the participants to stay with us. And, and, and yeah, so, so again, I'm, I'm expressing my you know, happiness and, and congratulations for all of you. Dharmaraja Navodaya, the master plan for the alma mater. Own and shape the future of the college. Dharmaraja College, one of the top primary and secondary education providers in Sri Lanka, has completed 131 years of service to the nation this year. For over a century, Dharmaraja College has established a unique culture shaped by norms and values that signify the Dharmaraja ethos and brand. 
From its inception, Dharma Raja College was a trendsetter in education in the country. Started by Colonel Henry Steele Alcott on the 30th of June 1887, it is today a school campus with over 50 acres in the heart of Candy City and has all the facilities of a national college with over 4,000 students and over 300 staff. Today, the challenges remain the same to think creatively and out of the box to position the school competitively in a rapidly changing social and educational context. It is the opinion of the Rajan's Professional Collective that Dhammaraja and the Sri Lankan education system as a whole is currently facing a number of challenges. Therefore, unless we intervene now, Dhammaraja would become just another school. The need for a master plan became evident during the past few years due to a number of factors. Cuts in state financial allocations, red tape and bureaucratic barriers to carrying out development activities and unplanned changes in staff all indicated the need for a master plan to streamline and strategize the school's activities. The Rajan's Professional Collective began an organized dialogue to develop a master plan for the college in 2016 with the objective of first identifying the key challenges facing the school and then to provide long-term solutions. These discussions were enriched with ideas and proposals made by past principals, deputy principals and education specialists. The principal and the staff and also the president of the OBU and his team in the Old Boys Union were instrumental in developing this master plan. This master plan will provide the roadmap to maintain Dharmaraja College as one of the leading education providers in this country. Vision Preparing an educated, judicious and value-conscious Rajan who fits well with the requirements of the future world of work and who possesses a balanced all-round personality. Mission Develop Dharmaraja College to become a provider of education that promotes the development of students through the implementation of a full curriculum in keeping with national educational goals and to produce citizens who can face and overcome the challenges in a changing world. Specific Objectives for Hard Skills Development Strengthening the education program by assisting both students and teachers Improving the standard of sports through quality coaching and encouraging student participation Streamlining the college extracurricular activities and outreach programs Developing infrastructure facilities Specific Objectives for Soft Skills Development making students aware of the college's history and its core values, further strengthening the unique culture of Dharmaraja, improving student discipline, enhancing students' personality so they are competitive in the employment market. The way forward. The Dharmaraja College Master Plan will be in operation under eight thematic areas. Each of these themes represent a critical area for the development of the school. Under this master plan, a common fund of approximately 100 million rupees will be established and necessary amendments to the Old Boys Union Constitution will be made to regulate the fund. Money from the fund will be strictly restricted to activities that are defined in the master plan and a rigorous approval and monitoring process will be established to ensure the efficient disbursement and utilization of these funds. These are the thematic areas covered under the overall vision of the master plan. Dharmaraja Identity and Reputation What is meant by Dharmaraja Identity and Reputation is that the product of the school, that's a Rajan, should aspire to a unique identity that embodies the core values of the school. 
a product of Dharmaraja should be someone unafraid to challenge social conventions and to stand against populist trends, to assert the Buddhist values by which the school has defined itself for over 130 years. In fact, a Rajan should be proud of his Rajan identity. Any event that carries the name Dharmaraja should align itself with the Dharmaraja ethos and has to be handled in a professional manner. Academic Performance Dharmaraja has always distinguished itself in the academic performance of its students. The school has consistently maintained high levels of achievement at public examinations. There is also a critical need to balance the competitiveness of academic performance with the values of giving and compassion described in theme 1. Personal, Social and Spiritual Development In today's context, many educationists, society leaders and so on will agree that there is a serious lack of concern about the social and spiritual development of students. Teaching of religion as a subject is not the answer to this problem. Spiritual growth of students must be integrated into the school culture and be part of the mainstream in a range of activities that students engage in while in school. Career Guidance This theme is connected to academic performance. The two are closely interlinked. In today's world of work, academic qualifications alone are no guarantee of successful or gainful employment. Traditionally, the Lankan education system prepares students for a limited set of professions. However, a school like Dharmaraja has a responsibility to prepare students for a much broader range of careers. ICT and International Collaboration Within the Lankan education system, students' exposure to ICT remains somewhat limited. However, ICT in today's world saturates every aspect of human life and there is a need to expose students to this diversity. As part of this theme, it is also envisaged that the schools and the OBU's online presence will be significantly enhanced. Sports, Physical Education and Extracurricular Activities The focus here is to develop a broad program to uplift the sports and physical education areas of the school. Connected to the theme of academic performance and extracurricular activities should not be seen as an additional burden or activities of lesser importance but a core part of the well-rounded education. A Rajan product should not be a bookish individual simply interested in textbook knowledge but a mature individual who has a range of skills. Staff Welfare and Development Next to students, the greatest human resource a school has is its staff. The school and the OBU has a responsibility to ensure that the staff have the resources and working environment in which they are happy and are productive. However, within these limits it is possible to contribute actively towards staff welfare and development. At the same time, the OBU with its wide range of human resources can also contribute to the continuous professional development or CBD of staff members. Infrastructure Development Dharmaraja College requires an integrated physical infrastructure development plan which takes into consideration the school's medium and long-term requirements. The 53-acre campus of Dharmaraja is unique in both its size and varied topography in the education system within Sri Lanka. Even some universities in the country do not hold such extensive or varied land resources. There needs to be a more visionary plan to upgrade existing infrastructure and to acquire new infrastructure where necessary. It is also necessary to regulate and systematically utilize the land resources of the school in a sustainable manner. This is merely the start. You Rajans with a sense of commitment must ensure the journey continues and your eagerness and resolve will make the difference in making the endeavor successful.
Um, thank you for staying with us, um, all the participants uh, and presenters. Um, so within uh, two minutes, uh, we'll be announcing the, the awards. OK, um, thank you for staying with us. So um, as we are coming to the end of the session, so I'm going to um, announce the, uh, the awards for this uh, uh, panel. Um, so uh, actually, this was done by uh, uh, you know, uh, the three, uh, uh, the chair and two panelists have sent their uh, own observations and, and marks, and then uh, uh, we, we calculated the average, and then we uh, have uh, come to the final marks. So, uh, Dharmaraj Education Research uh, Conference to, uh, 2020 awards for the best research study. Uh, special certificate for the third place goes to Miss. TKGMP Viracon. Uh, the special certificate for the second place goes to Miss KM Prabhani. Congratulations for both of them. And the best research uh, study award at Damaraja Education Research Congress uh, 2020 uh, in this particular session goes to Miss KNU Marasinghe. Congratulations. And um, uh, so there's a uh, special uh, the price, uh, the cash price. So um, Professor Sanjeev is going to announce the, the, the sponsor. Uh, for the first, uh, there is a special ca cash price and together with a certificate, uh, which will be sponsored by Dr. Jagat Premadasa, consultant UG at Anuradhapura uh, General Hospital. Uh, for the second and third places, spe uh, special uh, certificates will be sponsored by consult, uh, Dr. Mudita Lansakkar, a consultant cardiac, cardiac uh, surgeon, General Hospital Candy. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you all for joining with us. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this marks the end of this uh, session. Thank you. Okay.